Welcome to the Pod Doctors. I'm Dr. Damien Dauphiné, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Rafi Hussein. And we are back from somewhat of a hiatus. <laughs> We've been lazy bastards, I guess, um, trying to catch up with uh, life getting in the way. But um, we wanted to produce some more content here before the end of the year. And you've got a nice case here on a lipoma excision that I think is um, kind of cool. So I think in general, you can think of this in terms of any sort of soft tissue lesion that's causing pain in the foot and ankle and lipomas are not uncommon. Um, so fire away here. So lipomas, I, I don't know how much we've talked about them in the past, but they're little soft tissue masses, usually benign. And they're little fatty nodules that kind of form. In the foot and ankle space, we don't see too many, but the most common one is this juxtamalleolar lipoma that we see. Um, typically forms in this little pocket here on the anterior lateral side of the ankle, in front of the fibula, and right on that on top of that sinus tarsi. Sometimes it can be painful. I mean, I don't know. Well, you yeah, you can get something called lipedema. Yeah. And that's a different animal where a known normal uh, fatty deposit can become painful. Yeah. And it, if you look up lipedema, uh, it can be a real problem in different parts of the body. And that one, that's a normal place for yeah. adipose tissue. Yep. But if it becomes painful, uh, sometimes we have to consider removing it. Yeah, And I've not appreciated that as much over the years as I do now. I think I'm seeing that that can become a source of pain all by itself yep. uh, in some patients. And I think it's kind of a, an odd thing, but probably a poorly understood problem yeah, in the lower I, extremity. I remember back when we were reading through this, right, um, uh, back in school, it would say very common in postmenopausal women. And then I had a, I was going to do a couple case studies on back when I was in training. We were writing up different topics and stuff, and this was one of the topics. I was like, oh, this would be an interesting one. This is easy. I got a couple of cases of this, got, you know, pictures and whatnot. I looked up the literature on this, and it said literally the exact opposite. It said that there are no known uh, factors that correlate to why these form. They just form later on in life. They have no correlation, statistical correlation with, with menopause. With menopause. <laughs> yeah, all the stuff that we, you know, we yeah. assumed, right? Completely false. Now, I will say in practice, <coughs> the patients that do come in complaining about these are older. They do tend to be more often women. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just luck of the draw as far as I'm concerned. If it, there's no statistical um, well, I think I, mean, I, I think, but clearly... Uh, there's a difference between fatty deposits, adipose deposits in men and women and where they show yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is classically one where you'll have women come in and say, I have this swelling there. And, yeah. well, it's not really swelling. It, you really have an adipose tissue collection. It's fat. Yeah, it's tender um, palpation. But it, but it can be become a fatty deposit that becomes painful. Yeah. and. But it doesn't necessarily mean there's underlying pathology. And so sometimes you'll get an MRI on these and MRI will come back completely normal. Yeah. Uh, MRI is not going to show you whether or not that adipose collection is painful. So it's really a clinical diagnosis. So let's jump into the incision placement on this. I typically do my incision oblique. Or we go with the skin lines, the relaxed skin lines or Langer's lines or whoever decided to name it after themselves now. <laughs> um, I do them on a oblique, just along the pinch line. You'll we'll see on the side of the ankle that, you know, there's not a lot of structures over here that we have to be wary of, except the lateral branch of the superficial peroneal nerve, that intermediate dorsocutaneous nerve. Um, it is something that we'd be wary of. And in this case, I'm almost certain that, if I remember correctly, I, I scooped it so you can kind of see it and take a look at it. Mm. And I just have the nurse retract it back using blunt uh, instrumentation. And it, you know, you kind of, you know, um, real straightforward as far as surgery goes. Or So these are the toes up at this end here, the ankle back here. You see me flexing and moving that ankle up and down, making my skin lines in line with the relaxed skin tension lines. This is a giant rubber band of sorts. It's a, we call it an S mark. We desanguinate the foot. So I'm squeezing that leg, and we're pushing all the blood flow back to uh, where that tourniquet is, and then we inflate the tourniquet depending on where you inflate it. In this case, if I'm not mistaken, I did it at the thigh level. But you can do high calf, you can do wherever it is. 
um, just to um, uh, make sure that your field is very, very easy to see and no blood flow kind of comes in your way. All right, so I'm like, all right, incision, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I go very, very shallow on my incision here because I don't want to catch any branches of that um, superficial peroneal nerve here. It's a... Uh, um, it's an easy thing to, to catch. It's very superficial. There's no structures overlying it. It's right under the, the skin and it's right on top of the fat. So I'm just slowly dissecting down, carefully spreading the tissue. If you ever watch Dr. Pimple Popper, she does the same thing. Just slowly dissect it out, making your, your planes in the soft tissue. So lipomas, we already talked about. Um, they're benign. Typically they're found in the subcutaneous layer um, right on top of the fat underneath the dermis and they can be large they can be small they can have vessels running through them they can have structures running through them they can engulf different things but in this case this is very simple usually um, we don't find too much going through there maybe that superficial peroneal nerve branch coming across there um, but aside from that in this area we don't really have to worry about too much yeah um, no major blood vessels yeah yeah you just have to know your anatomy and each location can be different I've taken out some on the side of the leg. I've taken out ones on the ends of the toes. I mean, each of them are different. You just have to know the anatomy. Doing my blunt dissection. These are Mets. They're blunt tip scissors. And I'm just slowly working my way around that soft tissue mass to take it out as one giant piece. Um, this isn't liposuction surgery. We're not breaking down all the fat molecules and pulling them out with a giant vacuum. I want to take this out as a solid piece. And then I want this to hopefully lay flat when it closes up so the patient no longer has that bump there on the cosmetic side of things. And then as far as pain, that fatty lobule won't be pushing against the, uh, the nerve there. So um, it won't get pushed from the shoe and the nerve and the joint, um, um, so making that, sure the patient doesn't have pain after this. So at some point, uh, you're isolating that nerve branch? Yeah, you'll yeah. see. I, I'm, I'm almost certain it's in this little portion of video. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's literally, if when I pull it out, it's literally right here along the incision line. I was yeah. like, oh, there, there it is. is. <laughs> and then I'm like, here, let me, let me get your sense. And uh, I scoop it out because, you know, we want to be weary of all this stuff. Yeah, protect we're not, it. Yeah, we're not cutting. If you if you look, I'm not cutting. I'm putting it in and dissecting. I'm, I'm opening up my scissors. I'm trying to avoid cutting as much as I can in this area. So I think this is the part where I'm like, oh, I think I, I see that nerve there. I'm like, I'm like, here, grab this. And I'm like using my pickups to move her thing. Yeah, it was a, it was a scene. There we go. There's a nerve wrench. That's the superficial. That's it. There you go. Lateral. So I'm like, here, just scoop that in. And I continue my dissection. So I'm just going to jump ahead because you don't want to watch me dissect for 20 minutes. Now, do you send these out, obviously? Oh, yeah. Anything yeah. I take out of the body, I send yeah. them out. I mean, most of the time, 99.9% yeah. .9 of the time, these are benign. Do you have to send them out? Probably not. But... Just peace of mind for I my end. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just dissecting this out, and it comes out as a nice little lump of tissue. They, they can be pretty sizable, too, at times. This one wasn't, you know, one of the That's larger That's not the ones. biggest one I've seen. Oh, right? no, these can be huge. Yeah, this but, is... But that has nothing to do with how painful it can be. Yeah, so. completely unrelated. Yeah. And you, you don't want to uh, completely remove the fatty layer. No, no, no. Under We're, the skin, there's normal layer there. Yeah. yeah, you want to keep all that intact. But yeah, it, it's a fairly well encapsulated piece of adipose tissue that, yeah, can can be a problem. And I think it's a, uh, you know, like I said, I think it's a bigger issue than sometimes I've appreciated over the years. Oh yeah, I feel like it's one of those things that you know kind of skirts by the you know we're looking at bigger problems, bony deformities, tendinopathies. And this little knob of fat, I feel like most people don't even worry about it. They're like, oh, it's just swelling. And they, they disregard it. We disregard it. But if it causes pain, like this patient that was causing her pain, we're like, hey, you know, let's, let's you know. Well, it, it and I think it can get misdiagnosed as an underlying ankle sprain. Yeah. And, yeah. And they, they've, got no, they've got no instability. They've got some remote uh, history of maybe turning their ankle like three or four years ago, and they're yeah. assuming that's the problem. You, you can get an MRI, which is nice to be able to see that what this thing is made of. Yeah. Um, and then that's usually going to show you that all the ligaments are intact. Okay, well, then what do we do? Uh, did you do a diagnostic block, or did you do any other workup? Yeah, uh, we do the full workup, you know, uh, range of motion exams, x-rays, you know, 
everything beforehand and it was literally just point tenderness on that yeah. specific point. So I was like, all right, and then this most likely is going to be your your, um, your lipoma. So so as far as closure goes, uh, real simple. I do two layers on this um, and uh, we do superficial and deep. Superficial is my uh, running subcuticular and then my deep stitch is my, you know, you know, um, deep vertical mattress or, um, you know, deep to superficial um, closure. Um, you can do whatever type of closure you want. Um, I want this to heal up aesthetically pleasing too because I did my incision in that line um, to make sure that... It'll it'll hide it. Yeah, it'll yeah. hide. I will say that uh, this closure is not me. This is me just kind of boving any small vessels and stuff in there. Um, but... Um, we have a first assist. Uh, her name is Miss Shauna. Shout out. Um, and she is very good. She used to do plastics and stuff. I'm just cleaning up the wound and stuff. I thought I saw something in there. So She's great. She closes for both of us whenever we can steal her away from other surgeons. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're spoiled. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Oh, God. I think she sutures better than I do. <laughs> Me too. She's, uh, she's that good. Yeah. So well, we... Uh, we get the closure on this, uh, and you'll see, we'll do, I'm just going to jump ahead, we'll do deep to superficial, and the reason we do that is that the knot stays buried, mm. it's not close to the skin, so when she ends up tying this, you'll see that the knot will stay nice and low, and hopefully the patient won't ever feel it, and then as the time goes on, the weeks go on, the stitches will dissolve away, and hopefully no more um, scar there, no more palpable nodule there. Using Vicryl or Monocryl there? Uh, I do Vicryl 40 subcutaneous and then uh, 50 Monocryl subcuticular. Mm. There you go. So she's good. She uh, she goes through every little nook and cranny. She's aligned those uh, lines that I put into the skin beforehand. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to jump ahead. So she tied her anchor knot for the um, uh, monocryl uh, under the skin and now she's going to run it subcuticularly along the skin line and watch that hopefully just come together like you never had any type of surgery jump ahead she throws some stereo strips on afterwards oh yeah, yeah. masses all stereo strips okay. the works i typically do some type of iodine paste um, or some type of antibody ointment uh, i try to avoid doing the zero form the zero form tends to macerate um, from what I've seen, so I don't like zero form. Uh, you can do adaptic. You can do whatever you like. Uh, superficial dressing is is uh, is um, uh, your choice on that end. You're you're a zero form guy though, right? Yeah, I don't see it mass or anything. So yeah, so it, as long as as long as it stays clean and happy yeah. and healthy, that's all that's all we worry about. So she buried that knot now, and we'll cut it flush, and now that stitch is all healed up. You put that. And then you in a post-op shoe or a boot? What do you like? So, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a boot guy. Um, that's just me. I think it's easier to walk in. It has nothing to do with the recovery part of things. Um, typically, they're in a boot for like a week or two. That skin will heal up. Dressing is compressive. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, they're back to their normal shoes. Um, yeah, th this is just asking the skin envelope to heal. Yeah. Which is great. So it's two weeks roughly and back to doing what you want to do. Yeah, this is, these are one of the easier cases. We don't have to worry about bone, tendon, anchor, screws, etc. Yeah. We take that little soft tissue mass out, the area recedes, it shrinks away, there's no more pressure on that nerve there, and that subsides and hopefully gets better. So yeah, I think the risks would be if you didn't identify and protect that lateral dorsocutaneous nerve branch, yeah. for sure. And even, you know, it sounds crazy, but I've seen sural nerve branches. Yeah, you can have a Branch yeah, sort of, sort of an aberrant sural nerve branch. So you, you got to be cognizant of those things or you're going to whack them. And then, you know, patients can end up with painful uh, uh, stump neuromas. Yeah. On you the, fix on one the other problem, side. cause another problem. Yeah. So thankfully, we're, we're pretty, I think we're, we're pretty adept at identifying those and, and protecting them because we fix other people's uh, <laughs> issues with that yeah. iatrogenic issues of, of nerve injury after surgery. So, yeah. well, excellent. That was great. If not fat, God gave me airbags because I'm precious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very cute. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you, Dr. Hussain. Uh, that was a quick hitter with uh, a discussion about lipoma and what we can do for lipoma uh, or li lipedema. 
is yeah. another term for it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please uh, hit us up on the socials and we will get back to you if we can. Uh, and we will see you next time on The Pod Doctors.